All right, so once again, we're going to take a look at Gulp and Webpack and see how to use them together in a larger project. Uh, this is the um, repository of awesome React resources. Um, if you just go search for awesome-react on GitHub, it should come up. But this has not only tutorials, but it also has a bunch of tools that you can use, a bunch of videos. And um, if you scroll far enough down, it has a bunch of boilerplate projects you can use. Oh, we're quite a ways down here. Um, so there's all these boilerplate React projects you can use to start a brand new React project. So the problem isn't finding something to start with. It's uh, filtering through all of the different projects and figuring out which one you'd actually want to use. So there's a couple that I wanted to take a look at because they help illustrate um, using Gulp with Webpack. And I think that that's interesting uh, since that's what we've covered over the past couple of days. So the first one is this uh, React Seed by Treasoft. Uh, if you look at this code, well, at least some of it's going to be familiar. Uh, I don't think this is the Treasoft one, though. I have to find it. Sorry, one second. It's this one right here, React Starter Kit. Okay. So this is a fairly sophisticated front-end only application. There's no server in this. So if all you want to do is build an app and push it up to something like S3, you could use this to do that. Um, and you don't need a server, which is kind of cool. Other than the S3 server configured to be a web server. So I just wanted to show a couple of things in here because some of this is going to look familiar. Here's their Gulp file. You can see how they re require Gulp and then they require the Gulp plugins. Uh, and then just a bunch of tools that are used to make, to be able to do all of the different package management, different build process that this Gulp file handles. So walk through just a couple of these things down inside of here. Uh, for example, with assets, this is going to take all of your assets from the assets directory and then copy them into the build directory. Same with images, um, same with HTML pages, and you can go grab this code right off of GitHub. So if you want to scan through it and learn about it, that would probably be the easier way to, to figure out exactly what's going on because it's a fairly complicated Gulp JS file. Uh, here you can see the styles. We talked a little bit about this yesterday about how you can build less or SAS files into CSS files that you then minify. He has He's using this if inside of here to say, if we're in release mode, minify the CSS. Otherwise, it won't execute that line. Um, here's a bundle. So this is where Webpack gets sucked into your Gulp file, essentially. So this is going to use Webpack to build all of the different modules that you have laid out in your JavaScript source. So then the other thing that's cool about this is they have this serve task. So as soon as you, which is also the default task. So if you go to the very bottom here, maybe not. Somewhere he has this configured. I, I'm pretty sure the serve is set up to be the default task. So if you just run gulp, it's going to launch a server and begin serving the files in your build directory. Gulp is then going to watch all of your assets and pages and CSS. And if you make any changes, it's going to automatically reload the page so that all of the changes that you've made are um, immediately visible, which is really handy during development. So this is kind of a cool project. Um, it's worth checking out, especially if you want to take a look at uh, building a client-only application. So again, you can just go to Creosoft on GitHub and then just type React Starter Kit and you should be able to find that one. All right, so that's all fine and dandy, but what if you actually need a server? In that case, there are a couple of these boilerplate projects set up to be isomorphic React applications. Uh, this one looks promising. Uh, it's fairly active. There's 90 commits, so they've been working on this for 
for a little while. Uh, it has React, it has the React router, so you don't have to worry about setting up all that. And then it also has React hot load. So in this Creosoft project that we just showed, what's interesting about that is that it reloads the whole page and that's convenient. What's even cooler about the React hot load is instead of reloading the entire page, if you make a modification to your React component, it will just make the change to the single component. So then you maintain all of your page state, you don't have to get things back to where they were. Instead, it just makes the one change to the piece of code that you actually change. So this is a really popular project um, right now. The other cool thing about this particular boilerplate is that it comes set up to be isomorphic. And that's just a really big term that all it means is you can render your client side code on the server. That's handy for things like SEO, where I want to be able to render content down to the client and have it be usable without JavaScript enabled. And if in this case, that's already set up for you. Um, looks like the author is working on a couple of different uh, improvements, including adding Flux. Um, it looks like he's going to be adding maybe a demo application for photos or something like that. So this is another project that's worth looking at, um, kind of trying to filter down the number, the sheer number of React boilerplate projects that we take a look at. So here's two so far. Okay, so I wanted to just quickly walk through a third one here, which is this React.js phone gap. This is boilerplate code to build a mobile application using React. This doesn't use React Native, um, but if all you want to do is build something using PhoneGap, this is a pretty cool project to do that. Uh, I believe, let's see here. I was thinking this is the one that used a library called Topcoat, yeah. So the UI uses React Topcoat. Uh, if you go out and take a look at Topcoat, uh, there's a demo right here. And it builds up all these different interface UI elements for you. So that's kind of nice so that you don't have to worry about styling and building all those components. Instead, if you use this application, or if you use this boilerplate rather, to build your application, you'll have all that ready and available. All right, so another one we want to take a look at is this React Starter. Uh, this is a fairly sophisticated uh, starting point. I like this one because it takes into account a production configuration as well as a development configuration along with a hot dev. So it uses that same React hot reloader. Uh, and then it has all of the different um, configurations so you can build your JavaScript for each environment. It lets you use all the different kind of style sheets. That's handy, especially if you run into a situation where the project that you want to include or the, the package you want to include might be written in less. It uses less instead of SAS, and maybe in your project you're using SAS. So they've set this up to solve that problem. You can run your less through your preprocessor, you can run the SAS through a preprocessor. Both will output CSS, and then you can just stick them all together at the end of the day, which is really kind of convenient. So I think as far as full stack React, um, projects. This one is worth taking a look at. It uses Node. Um, I can't remember. I don't think this one is set up to be isomorphic, but you can combine the concepts and maybe going forward we'll take a look at doing that, combining the concepts between the different projects so that we can extract the benefit from each one uh, to put together some type of boilerplate that makes sense for us to be able to use going forward. Uh, the last project I wanted to walk through was this React component boilerplate. I wanted to look at this one in particular because it does something none of the others do, which is it comes configured with Karma. So that has your tests already set up. That's important. Um, I think it's unfortunate when we start out a project without tests set up because then everyone thinks, oh, we'll get around to writing tests eventually when, in fact, we should be looking at the tests very first before we actually write any code. So might pull some of the concepts from this project into some of the other projects so that everything starts with tests. Uh, they're really simple. So let's just go ahead and take a look at one test really quickly. Kind of looks a little bit like RSpec. 
basically you write a, a test, you describe what it is that you're testing, and then you can just execute your test code right here. All right, so I think that that's all. Are there any questions? Nope. Okay. Nope. All right. Thanks, you guys. We will talk to you later. Thank you.